Coming up on today's podcast, say hello to my new wellness tracker and possibly yours as well. This is at-home testing taken to a whole new level. Hi, I'm Tony. I'm an author, presenter at Sky Sports, and years ago I went to the jungle and got ill. Very <laughs> ill. So this is my podcast adventure to find more energy. It's packed with biohacking, science, health tech, supplements, and some of the most well-known experts on the planet. This is something I spent four months of my life doing with electrodes glued to my head so that you can do a lifetime worth of meditation. Decide what you don't give a f about, which is something you don't care about. Some of it gets quite out there. I had some stem cells sent up to my house that I had stored, and then I injected myself with mannitol. And we even hack hangovers. Alcohol is poisonous. So is water and oxygen in the wrong dosage. So that's my podcast, Zestology. Live life with energy, vitality, and motivation. Welcome back to Zestology. Tony Wrighton here, sitting at my kitchen table, and I've just done today's interview with Mirai Tafen. And I am loving her company right now, Vivu. Vivu is at-home urine test strips for personalized nutrition. And look, you've, been, you've probably been listening to this podcast for a while. You know that I'm a massive testing geek. I love collecting metrics. And in my experience, when you do at-home testing, it can be a right old hassle. You do the test, you post it. Three weeks later, you get a little bit of uh, information and feedback. And actually, it's really nice to do it and get the results there and then. And that is what Vivu does. It tracks 11 key wellness parameters and you just pee on a stick, right? And then you get the results. So it works very well. You can track water consumption, pH, ketones, um, UTI risk, protein levels, kidney health, liver health. Then there's some parameters that I think are great for histamine intolerance as well, vitamin C, magnesium, so much more as well. Um, we're going to get into this chat with Mirai Tafun now, but you can use, just when you're listening, bear in mind, you can use the code ZEST30 at Vivu to receive 30% off. So it's V-I-V-O-O dot I-O, V-I-V-O-O dot I-O. Receive 30% off with that code. And um, yeah, I mean, it's just like, this is the sort of thing that biohackers love. It's It's fun. And it works really well as well. I would love to hear what goes on with your parameters. And in this podcast, you will hear my scores that go well and my scores that I've been testing that haven't gone quite so well. And I started off by asking Mirai um, about Vivu and what it is. Here she is. Uh, Vivo is a health tracker. I guess the easiest way to understand it, it's just like your Apple Watch, but instead of wearing it to your wrist, you're peeing on it. <laughs> yeah. And instead of tracking your steps and heart rate and your sleep, you track important nutrients and important biometrics, such as your calcium, magnesium, hydration levels, pH, ketones, and more. Now, I have got a lot of questions. I've been using Vivu and I'm very excited about the parameters it's been giving me. And so far, I think I'm looking pretty healthy on it. So I'm pretty pleased about that. Um, oh, that's so great. I thought, I thought it'd be handy in the start to talk about some of the things that you track with Vivu and why you think that's important, because I've long wanted to do more tracking than I do. And this is a way of doing it. Yeah. Um, so with Vivo, you can track right now 11 metrics. Um, by the way, it's like maybe I can mention how to use it because it's an yeah. at-home test, but it's a truly at-home test. Majority of the at-home test is you collect your sample at home, send it to a lab, wait for a month for your results. Uh, with Vivo, we, we definitely wanted to like erase that experience from the world and create a truly at-home experience. So what you need to do is urinate one of our Vivo tests and scan it with the Vivo application, then instantly you'll be getting your results. Um, what we track is we have important minerals such as magnesium, calcium, uh, salt, le salt levels in your body uh, based on your daily intake. You can track your vitamin C levels, uh, pH, ur 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 urinary acidic uh, levels, uh, hydration, proteins for kidney health, uh, bilirubins for liver health, and ketones, one of our favorite 
most favorite metrics, as you can imagine. Uh, also, nitrates for possible UTIs. So there is a variety of metrics. Uh, on the pipeline, obviously, we are looking for adding more in the mineral and vitamin spaces because uh, our co consumers really love those metrics that they can correlate with their day-to-day -day lives. And we saw um, the simple, something simple as magnesium. Uh, up to 60% of Americans are predicted to be not meeting with their daily intake requirements, which is linked to so many chronic diseases. We can deep dive metric by metric, but what we're trying to bring is bring important metrics that you can track at home, which will in the long term prevent chronic diseases, uh, increase your longevity and energy, obviously. Yeah. No, and I mean, listen, we talk about magnesium quite a bit on this pod podcast, and I've found a huge benefit to taking it at certain, at certain times of day. So it's actually very, very helpful to be able to do a simple P test, which I did last night for the first time. And I, it's, it's, it's very easy to do. Um, and um, I might, I'm just, I'm just going to have a look now, actually, at my magnesium levels, and you can tell me what you think. Uh, my firstly water 10 out of 10 I was quite pleased about that hydrated <laughs> um, and then my magnesium levels 10 out of 10 0.56 magnesium to creatinine value that's that's pretty good right yes uh, great that you're optimal I, I, I I'm out of balance on magnesium but with the food and natural ingredients, I can't meet my, my daily intakes. And with supplement, I always get too much because, you know, uh, they're starting from 250 milligrams. So great for you. What do you do to basically reach your goals? Well, I take magnesium supplementation. <laughs> supplement. <laughs> I it's take magnesium easiest. breakthrough, which I bang on, bang on about it all the time. And actually, because I sort of think that some things I know that when I drink a lot of coffee, for example, I feel a bit dehydrated or, you know, if I, do, if I do a lot of exercise and we've just been on holiday in a very hot place. And I mm -hmm. did feel like there was a few nights when I sort of almost felt a bit dehydrated and you sort of limbs start jerking out in the night <laughs> <laughs> and then I needed more magnesium. So that would have been very helpful to be able to test for the hydration and the magnesium there as well. It affects the mood too. Um, so before testing myself with Bivu this regularly, um, uh, I, I didn't have any tool except the lab tests uh, from hospitals or laboratory companies uh, to test these metrics. And after I started using Bivu, I immediately start supplementation on some of the metrics, which is vitamin C and magnesium, um, and started to drink mineral water because I was exercising a lot, but mm. always replacing it with water. That was my biggest problem, I guess. And my salt levels were always so low, which was pretty surprising for me because 93% of Americans are overtaking it. <laughs> yeah. And I think who uh, is trying to like make this pact, they're trying to reduce the salt consumption 30% to prevent 2.5 million deaths in a year, mm -hmm. literally like same level of COVID uh, that, wow. that rate. Wow. Uh, so I was expecting I will be so high in sodium, but yeah, uh, it, was, it was wrong. So these metrics, before you test them, you have no relationship with them. That's what we were trying to do, introducing these uh, new concepts, new important nutrients that you should be taking enough. And, and we was a tool to track if you're taking it enough or if you're not taking enough, how you feel, yeah. basically a mirror to reflect what's going on. Yeah, no, it's cool. And actually it's, it's interesting because I run two sites. I've got my own site, which is my podcast site and my own personal website. And then we've also got a site which started off as a passion project. It's on histamine intolerance, which is quite a specific condition, but actually it turns out a lot of people suffer from it. Um, and two of the things that really help the most, I would possibly say the best natural antihistamines are vitamin C, and magnesium they really help get your energy your, your histamine levels down and so i'm definitely going to push this out to them and tell them about it because i just think wow you can actually start to measure it and maybe when you're having a histamine flare-up which believe me is very painful you can start to test your vitamin c levels and think oh yeah actually i need more there so it's very cool we haven't really had this am i right in saying we haven't really had this sort of thing before yeah, and, and the interesting thing about Vivo is Vivo is mostly looking into your daily intakes because we are testing your urine, uh, which at the beginning I was pretty spectacle, like will uh, our customers adapt to this new 
uh, term daily intake because what they care is am I deficient or am I well enough like they're looking at blood le levels or like do I have enough stored in my bones but how daily intake is affecting our day-to-day -day life is also really important obviously accumulation of low daily intake will result in deficiencies but also what you're eating what you're doing what like even the exercise from the sleep routine how these metrics are affected because there is also a really really important concept that we sometimes neglect like absorption sometimes you might be taking enough of the uh, ingredients but your absorption might be lower due to what you eat what you do how you feel stress everything affects everything so funny in our body and uh, I, I didn't know about his uh, for histamine vitamin c's um uh, antihistamine yeah. i mean so that's um, that's amazing i have so many allergies maybe i can actually use this maybe yeah i'll tell you what after, after this is finished i'll send you a link to the site because um mm -hmm. because it took me 20 years to work it out and it has absolutely changed my life and Amazing. it's similar to allergies but for me it was often in the gut but i would you know for instance if i eat dark chocolate i get a blocked up nose <laughs> mm -hmm. but it took me 20 years to work it out um oh, you can help me i always have blocked nose i don't know if it's pollens is it cats is it what i eat it's such a chaos and elimination diet is sometimes really challenging oh, maybe yeah. you did that yeah yeah no it is but the, unfortunately the best way to find out if you've got histamine and intolerance is an elimination diet <laughs> <laughs> you know i tell you what you know what i would love to work with you on and that is incorporating a histamine test into mm -hmm. vivo that would be amazing, but I don't know. I don't know how to do it. <laughs> but if we could no, do no. it, wow, it would be so fact, amazing. You said that so many customers want actually like food allergy tests in, mm. uh, integrated into Vivo, and we at the beginning we really set our standards like we want only at home tests. But there's so many partner companies that we can mm. make data integrations. So let's say if you did an every level test or Triva test, if you can just connect that data into Vivo through maybe Apple Health or something, we can cater all of your advice. Because when I was looking at your website, I'm like, oh my God, like we didn't uh, cater some allergies. Because when you get your Vivo advice, I would prefer you have a basically more cleaner advice sheet. We obviously um, ask in the beginning if you have food allergies, like if you are allergic to dairy, lactose, or if you're uh, if your diet is like vegan, vegetarian, even your chronic diseases, but some of the uh, situations can be too specific, but you might be the, like you, you might be uh, benefiting the most out of the advice because you mm. have to follow a certain diet. Yeah, yeah. But then it's useful as well, isn't it? Because you, your practitioner could take a look at the results and then work out what you need. Um, if I look at some of my other results, on your app because I, I i was quite pleased with what came up but there was something to work on i think um and that is my ph level <laughs> was three out of ten and my ph oh. value was nine what does that mean ah uh, your alka your ph was alkaline uh, yes exactly my ph alkaline. was alkaline Yes. Well, it, it means you're probably, <laughs> you're maybe eating more vegetables uh, than average for people. Uh, you probably don't consume much. Again, chocolate, coffee, uh, meat, Coke, like like Coke, <laughs> yeah. Fanta, whatever bad stuff like that, and eating yeah. mostly vegetables. We see that actually pretty common in vegetarian or vegan uh, customers of ours. Is that true for you, by the way? I, I don't know how, what kind I'm of diet you're following. I'm not vegetarian or vegan, but I'm pretty healthy. I'm trying to think. Uh, certainly yesterday when I did the test, um, I didn't eat any uh, meat. So yesterday, not. <laughs> but generally. And nine is a pretty yeah. high point, by the way. That is why your score is low. It is not expected to a healthy individual to have it. But if you're, again, following... Uh, like heavily vegetable uh, diet, it's normal to see that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Where did the idea come for Vivu? <laughs> it's such an interesting story, actually. Let me give you the long version. Yeah. Because uh, the first time I met with urine tests was in 2012. I was working in a hospital in a biometric, like biochemistry lab as an intern. Uh, and 
I had to work with urine tests for one full day. What I was doing is taking urine uh, dipstick tests, dipping it to urine and put it to an optical reader. After I did it for a day, I said, hey, guys, I'm a bioengineer. I cannot do this. Like, please take me to a different section of this uh, hospital. And they take, took me to stem cell treatment center because I remember I was so like, put it off by all the urine, stool, solid, like blood. It was so funny. Years after, like years literally passed. And uh, I built a biosensor company uh, uh, with my current co-founders, which was for um, basically uh, dangerous transmitting diseases in farms, like brucella, salmonella for cattle. And wow. while we were doing that, I just remembered those urine tests that I touched years, years ago. And I wanted to get familiar with them again. So I ordered some, you know, the standard 10 parameter ones and started to playing with them. And by that time, it was already 2017. So mobile phone cameras were much more advanced compared to 2012. And we said like, hey, this can be actually used at home by everyone if it was um, maybe made more user friendly mm -hmm. and understandable because the metrics you see is specific gravity, like bilirubin, like you know nitrates, leukocytes. Not normal people are not familiar with those terms. So, but specific gravity means literally your hydration levels. Mm -hmm. Proteins means your kidney is not filtering well. Bilirubin is an important indicator for your liver, etc. So, we basically made an application. Not even an application. The first prototype was you were taking a picture of a test, emailing it to us, and your results were coming. So that's when we raised money from 500 startups, then went to the uh, building the full product. By that time, I was already used all the competitors in the market. I had my Borch, my Fitbit, then Aura, every level, 23 me Biome. I did all the tests in the market. Yeah. And and I I was like, for sure, we don't want. Uh, not at home at uh, at home tests. They have to be done at home in your privacy, in your comfort zone. And another important part was you should be able to understand your results. Like a everyday user should be looking in the app and understand what's going on with the yeah. description and explanations. And last but not least, it should come with advice and some sort of sort of motivation and encouragement and motivation and encouragement part, part or gamification part we haven't made it live yet but specifically for the advice part was really important because whenever i look at my apple health like apple data i just see numbers metrics graphs but i cannot play with that data unless i have some actions to take and measure the effects of those actions so uh, even something simple as step like visualizing your step is one thing and getting a a plan how to increase your movement more compared to the last week is a different story. So yeah, this is how we started. Uh, I was in biosensor industry and I, I wanted to create a consumer friendly uh, health tracker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's awesome because, you know, I mean, there's sort of people who listen to this podcast, a lot of biohackers listening and people absolutely love gathering metrics. And I did a whole, I wrote a whole chapter of my book about gathering metrics. And actually I wish I'd met you before I'd written the book because I definitely would have put Vivo in there because I like to collect all sorts of metrics and some of them, you get them on the Oura ring, for example, you just mentioned the Oura ring, you know, I can see I, I did, um, 13,000 steps yesterday, that's good. Or I slept for six hours, 57 minutes, that's fine. But a lot of them are quite subjective. They're not objective. They're like, oh, my energy level was sort of seven out of 10 today. And actually, this is a great way of getting metrics that you can't argue with. And that's, that's really very helpful. And that is where I see technology going. And that's why I'm quite excited about using this a lot more, actually. And on the line, I, I, I envision that we will, would be more supportive on how you can actually improve your metrics as well, because uh, that's, that's a part of the market being neglect. Like the majority of the market is for monitoring, but after, afterwards is not that well catered. I stopped using Aura a while ago just because it was blocking me from my exercise routine because it was always saying, you're not recovered. I'm like, I know I had a late meeting and I couldn't sleep. <laughs> yeah. I know, but I still want to exercise. And one day, even though I know I wasn't recovered, I exercised and I was like, felt better. I'm like, yeah. okay, maybe Aura is a great tool when you have a great sleep yeah. schedule, but when it's not, it is really demotivating me 
like it's shaming me all the time. Just the data, how huh. it's present. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. even say you're a bad sleeper or it doesn't insult me. It's just yeah. how the data present with a score out of hundreds on recovery. That yeah. was my specific problem. So products like Vivu, Aura, Voop, everything like uh, should be more supportive too because everybody knows, like let me, let me tell the phrase it like correctly. Everybody knows that we're not perfect and we're not always making the best decisions. Uh, what we need sometimes is more support and motivation from these tools rather than more data and more graphs. That's, yeah. that's an interesting fact that is neglected for so long. So in future, we will add these more into Vivo. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, um, I mean, it's a big, I'm quite interested in you talking about the late night meetings and starting a business. And I certainly find that running a health business and being involved in health, I know what's good for me. But if you've got a late night meeting or if you've just got a day, like today, for example, I've got lots to do. I've got four podcast interviews. It's full on, you know, it's just like, it's, it's, I know that it's, I, I, I've got to do the good stuff. Do you sometimes find it's hard to live up to the expectations of what you should be doing as someone who runs a health business? Oh, definitely. You feel like double the pressure. Yeah. Like e even your weight, your fat ratio, or um, things you eat sometimes, your cheats, etc. Like makes you feel under pressure. But I came to a point. Like I'm 29. I I'm really in a good place in life. Like like I made peace with both good and bad decisions, but maybe balancing it all well. And when you can, when you have time to invest more and when you can't what can you do it's life like i'm i'm traveling between europe and united states yeah all the time and i'm yeah. all, like i'm jet lagged constantly so sleep is is one of my biggest issues but i'm trying to compensate that with better food for example to to get back to the energy level i want to have it's not just about the pressure from the society or people that you have a healthcare business but it also your inner goals, like you want yes. to live, live better. I, I, I realized sometimes, like periodically, sorry for the cat. <laughs> I, I realized right <laughs> sometimes I feel health life, mm. if you know what I mean. Yeah. It, my focus is not there. My body is not catering for what I should be doing that day. And sometimes I feel 100% on top of my game. It's normal to have these, I guess, waves in the crap. Definitely, definitely. And, I, and I, as I said to you, we were on holiday fairly recently. Um, Travelling really takes a lot out of your body, doesn't it? Um, it does. I'm, I'm interested to know, do you test with Vivu after you travel? And what do the results suggest? <laughs> if I eat plain food. <laughs> if you eat plain uh, food, yeah. Yes. If I eat plain food, uh, I... I I realize like my pH is too acidic. Like whenever I actually eat out, and my urinary, urinary pH is acidic. And if I don't have my supplements, I start to like uh, lose my great scores. Um, I still couldn't hack the traveling though, because it's just such a long distance between U US and um, Europe. Yeah. So it's just like, I feel... How can I say that? Maybe it's the sleep part. Maybe it's the dehydration part. Because no matter how much you drink water, you still came out dried from a plane, mm -hmm. out of a plane. It is pretty hard. Do you have any travel hacks that I can use? <laughs> um, well, fasting is the best one. Just not eating on the plane. That always helps. But, you know, we this flight back from Thailand was 12 hours. What was it? 12 hours, 30 minutes, I think. It's, and it's all daytime. It's so boring. You want to you just have to eat in the end, don't you? <laughs> that is a torturous part, but it's a great, actually, trick. Yeah. Like uh, maybe fasting or packaging your own food before you fly. It's, it's, it's I guess, the best way. Yeah. Because the plain food has something wrong with it. I don't know what. Like, yeah. even if it looks normal when you eat it and while you're flying, it really like digests. Maybe you can take a walk in the plane. Sometimes that works too. I, I think that's it as well. I do think that's it. I think if you're just sitting in the same place for 12 and a half hours, the food has nowhere to go and it doesn't move anywhere, does it? It just sits in your belly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I mean, apart from that, I do think that movement quite a bit is, is a good one. But there's something about just sitting down that means that you don't digest properly, I think. And that's probably the biggest one for me. I've certainly found we actually went very a big treat a few years ago. We somehow got upgraded 
and went first class to Austin for paleo effects and had all the lovely food. And this was before I discovered histamine intolerance as well. And it was cheese, red wine, meat. All, I mean, obviously, because we were first class, we made full use of it. And my belly was so bad afterwards. My vegan <laughs> scores would have been absolutely terrible. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good indicator too. What I see sometimes, like I have this uh, general pattern, but when I fly or when I'm sick, like it can be simple as flu, my results just goes off the chart, like pattern changes. And in time with more accumulated data and more inputs from our customers, we can actually, I think, create different AI models to predict what is going on. Because like, it is off the charts. It's different. Like your, your urinary pH, let's say, is always six, and it's somehow it's four, five. There is a change in some sort of thing in your life. And uh, log, like logging or maybe making a diary of these things and teaching them to AI could be an interesting yeah. uh, business. It could be. And actually, what I'm hoping to do is start doing using Vivo over time and then reporting back some of my results on this podcast, because I do that with some of the other tracking that I do. And I'm just really excited to see what I can change. You know, that's the big thing, isn't it? When you start to think, because firstly, you want good health. And secondly, then you want, you want to get the, 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 the extra 5%, the high performance bit. And that's really exciting yeah. if you could get that. It's almost like a game, I, I, it feels mm. like to me, because like, it's almost like a game you're playing with your body, like how, what affects how, what, like, uh, how did, like sometimes I take three, four tests a day just to understand that specific ingredient and how right. it's affecting me, like coffee, alcohol. It's yeah. super fun to play with them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What's the difference on the day you have one coffees compared to the day you have seven coffees? Well, that'd be interesting. <laughs> I, I don't have seven coffees a day, by the way. <laughs> I can, by the way. I, I just stop myself. Coffee yeah. is such a, such an interesting oh, thing. <laughs> coffee yeah. is such a weird addiction. Um, caffeine. Um, so um, coffee, but by the way, coffee, alcohol, those uh, specific to... Um, content fluid i look into hydration ph specifically yeah. right um and yes they make you dehydrated and your it makes your urinary ph so acidic it's mm. super easy to realize also what how you feel is important too but um that those are the two metrics i look for those two metrics yeah. uh, two ingredients um with alcohol i can definitely say like in a mediterranean style you know a couple of glass of wine some good food and good friends is not even though it's making your scores go off the chart i i don't i'm not it's not my enemy but coffee definitely when i drink more than a cup i feel even my sleep is affected i made this really? certain rule after 12 p.m no coffee oh right or okay I can't sleep. yeah yeah you're sensitive it, then yeah it's not that i'm sensitive the the breakdown ratio, I don't I forgot the term. Basically it's around six hours. The half so life. Yes. The half life, thank you. Half life yeah. of yeah. Uh, caffeine is pretty long. So they don't recommend you to drink coffee after two PM afternoon mm. just because it will affect your sleep cycles. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. It's such a yeah. good thing. I don't know what to say. <laughs> I know. It's too good. And listen, I and uh, I was just in Istanbul, the Turkish coffee was almost a bit too strong for me. <laughs> that really is it quite is like, something, isn't it? hardcore espresso but with particles like it's yeah. so weird right you get to the bottom of the cup and there's like because you're in istanbul at the moment which is why i'm saying it and it was like it's that grit in the bottom of the cup <laughs> yeah that was too much for me interrupting this podcast for one moment to remind you that it is brought to you by my podcast partner today magnesium breakthrough very apt because we've been talking about magnesium on this podcast and magnesium is one of the things you can measure with vivu so if your magnesium levels come up low on vivu then you can take magnesium breakthrough to sort it out it's very cool there's a lot of synergy there and actually i've been testing my magnesium levels with vivu as you've been hearing and they've been absolutely fine. And I'm presuming that is because the Magnesium Breakthrough has been helping boost them to an optimal level. Now, Magnesium Breakthrough has a new formula. And for plenty more on that and get your discount code, you can go to magbreakthrough.com slash Zestology. It's magbreakthrough.com slash Zestology. And use the code Zestology10 for 10% off wherever you are in the world. So if you're in the UK, that'll work on the UK site. If you're in the US, that'll work on the US site as well. And as I say, it is a new formula. So I'd love to hear how you are getting on. 
What you do when you get your Vivu strips is make sure you take your magnesium and then your magnesium levels will be looking good. So it's magbreakthrough.com slash Zestology and it all works really well with Vivu. Let's go back to Mirai and back to the show. The other thing that I wanted to mention is that a lot of people who listen to this podcast follow a low carb or a keto diet. And I did that for a while. And as well as everything else, you do track ketones as well with Vivu, mm-hmm. don't you? We have a huge uh, low carb, high protein audience, ke- like strictly keto audience. Yeah. Um, I guess the majority of the urine tests in the market are for keto specifically anyway. So we, we wanted to capture that spirit. I did keto uh, uh, multiple times. I just don't do it in a, a steady basis. Yeah. Just because as a woman, I realized my cycles are monthly yes. rather than yearly. Mm. So during my period, like in PMS, I, 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 my body seeks for carbs and I didn't want to starve it. So if it's asking, I should give it some, right? Uh, But um, keto is a great audience for Vivo just because when you're doing keto, you sometimes don't understand how you can be harming your body or how you're lacking some of the really important nutrients as long as you're losing fat. But fat loss is not the end goal for viewers. Uh, Fat loss is a positive outcome for specifically keto metric uh and what i saw is actually i have so many friends like who are trainers or bodybuilders they do excitingly vivo and they're like my scores are horrible and i'm like because you're eating only meatballs and broccoli and nothing <laughs> else no variety right like uh um, what i think vivo can introduce to their lives is See, like, take a look at your magnesium, calcium, vitamin C, track your pH if you're balancing your vegetables enough with your proteins, and especially hydration. It is so easy to be dehydrated in a keto diet as well because oh, God, of the yeah. heavy yeah. protein consumption. I guess yeah, it's a good tool for ketoers as well. Just I have to highlight this. Uh, when you're keto adaptive, it's, it's, uh, your urinary ketone levels are yeah. lower. Yeah. Uh, so you can maybe transition transition into a blood test like keto mojo after three four months of keto. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. And I, I too was keto for for a while, and I know that if you are really very keto, then it doesn't quite show up so much on on pee sticks, does it? But um, but it's interesting because I also transitioned out of keto and I, I think I do feel better to be honest and now I, there were no ketones in my blog when I did the test last night and I'm not surprised because I do quite like rice these days <laughs> when I skip breakfast and just do coffee bad, bad days yeah. um I, I see ketones and I'm like uh, by lunchtime I'm like yeah I have ketones like it, it gives you this pleasure of some sort of accomplishment because of what now the yeah. Healthy conscience society basically imposes you. Like if you have ketones, you're in good shape. But that's that's obviously uh, not true. But it's a, a good diet if you want to lose fat specifically. Yeah. Uh, and for energy. If, yeah. Yeah. For energy, for basically renewing your cells, your, supporting your immune system. It's just uh, even it, like it, maybe you read, there's so many studies on cancer treatments and starvation. Mm like glucose starvation for the cancer cells, et cetera. Yeah. It's just not, not for me for whole, whole, whole weeks of the month. Some yeah. months I have, uh, some weeks I have to skip. Yeah. And actually I do intermittent fast every day. So what mm-hmm. I should try doing is I should do a Vivo test. What late morning before I eat. Oh yeah. You'll definitely see ketones then when right. I do, if I see ketones. Okay. Yeah, that, that'd be a, that'd be a nice little buzz. It's been, a, I used to use the pea sticks and then I spent ages using a blood monitor, which to be honest, was fairly unpleasant on the fingers after a while, but. <laughs> ah, the about test, the CGM, you yes. know, the, uh, they are uh, at CS this year. I saw that they're adding lactate and uh, ketones. Are they? Yeah. Cool. Right. Wow. Uh, have you tried CGMs? I don't know, but like the yes, same sensor, now it will track uh, two more metrics, which yeah. is cool, I guess. Yeah, I have tried the CGMs. You're talking about, for people who don't know, that this is the, the sensor that attaches to your arm and uh, tracks continuous your, your glucose. glucose. Yeah. The first one came off after four days because I went in the sauna. But then the second one, uh, and actually I thought when you were talking about plain food, 
weirdly, the one thing that I noticed really made my blood sugar spike so much was when I ate in a canteen at the TV channel I was working at. And I think they cooked all the food in sunflower oil and not very good oils. And there just wasn't very good ingredients. Maybe it had been sitting around for a while or they'd warmed it up again. But the quality of the food there, I think, was so bad that it meant that my CGM monitor told me my glucose was really high. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, even when I wouldn't have what expected I, it. Yeah, what I like about biohacking is it's almost like gaining new talents to measure something like with your brain. Because I use CGM for a while, when I see a food right now, I can see the spikes literally <laughs> in my brain, even though if I don't, if I'm not wearing it. So yeah, I, I, cool. I wish for Vivo customers to be understand when they have, when they have a full day of food, they can predict their Vivo results in their brains because mm. it's such a cool thing that it's an additional talent you're acquiring through a sensor, but in time you learn. So yeah. as you learn more and more, you can just uh, start calculating in your brain. Definitely. And, and that's where having concrete data is actually really helpful because otherwise you're just guessing. And so that's yeah. one of the things that I love collecting metrics for. And, and that's why I'm going to be. Uh, soon you will be things. able to download, by the way, uh, your raw data from Vivo. Okay. I think it should be live in a month or so, yeah. like just Apple health or your uh, other data. Yeah. And you can basically look at your Excel of uh, Tony. But how did he do this year? Oh my God, that's great. That's great. Look at my ketones levels that morning. <laughs> right. Well, now, Mira, uh, two questions that I ask everyone is what is one book that you would recommend? And what is one tip for living with more energy and vitality? So one book and one tip for more energy. Um, the book is not health related. It, but it, I was it can the, be anything. It doesn't have okay. to be health related. It can be uh, fiction. It can be anything you like. Nowadays, my favorite book is actually the courage. The courage to be disliked. It is. It is wholly about like making peace with yourself, and it has so many interesting concepts inside the book, such as there is no competition, uh, deny the trauma, like really brave concepts are, which are super, I will say anti-Freudian, uh, so not well um, heard, but interesting concepts, I would definitely recommend it. And energy, oh God, I guess my best energy tip would be waking up with sun and sleeping before 10 p.m. When mm -hmm. I can do it, it works great. But <laughs> I majority of the time I, I I wake up later than after the sun. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I agree. The earlier the bedtime it does seem to be better, doesn't it? Yes, it, it is such a such a wonder, such a wonder. Like you feel that vitality in your body. Obviously, there are so many other energy tips I would have, but if you tell me one, that's that's the one for me. It, would you notice a difference in your Vivu scores depending on how well you sleep? Yes. Like, again, uh, if I'm feeling off, my Vivo results are always off. I cannot define specific metrics like pH, hydration. They always are off, but like uh, magnesium, calcium, vitamin C, they're mostly related to your intake. I just see it as a pattern change uh, as, as that I'm saying off. I see nitrates from somehow, like I see proteins from stress, but I have a healthy kidney, but I see protein in my urine. Like mm. why? And I even like, I was pretty spectacle for the uh, spec person. I'm not even looking at like, because I know how the color changes. What? Yeah. What do you mean protein? Oh my God, I have protein. <laughs> like how? And yeah. it is just so interesting. Like off the chart means for me, I'm doing stuff wrong and sleep is, I can see definitely the yeah. direct reflection in my urine. You realize now I'm going to be messaging you on a daily basis. Oh my God, I've got protein. What's going on? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, I, please message me so we can understand where are we not assisting you in the app. Yeah, no, so I'm only joking. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> joking because I want to bore you with my scores. <laughs> I take screen grabs. Look at this. My hydration is 10 out of 10. Um, with my mom, most of the time we talk about our scores. Like really? her salt is always great, like so salt consumption. And mine is always low. And the other day I, I got crazy. We had this friends came and I ate some chips. The next day I had optimal salt. And I'm like, oh my God, no, no, I don't want to get it this way. I wanted to have mineral water. So yeah, like it's so mm, funny. Like sometimes yeah. something bad can actually 
balance your scores. <laughs> yeah. Actually, you talk about the salts, really interesting. Um, what, because I think it suggested that I could, my salinity was four out of 10. And that's quite was low. It high? Well, no, well, that's, no. yeah, it's four out of 10. But that's quite interesting because I eat loads of salt. Uh, but uh, score four can be high salt too. High salt is also dangerous. That's why I couldn't. Oh, okay. No, it says um, sodium value, naught milligrams per DL. Low, it says low. Low. Oh, low. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Are you exercising? Because what I'm seeing is I, I always yes. thought I'm overeating salt. That's why I'm super surprised. And always my salt is low, low, low. Then I realized, hmm, maybe I can add some literal salt to my meals. Because when you're yeah. eating healthy, you're, you're always avoiding salt automatically. Uh, we have this great advisor called Dr. James. Um, he had a book called Salt Fix. He actually oh, yeah. taught yeah. me Salt what fix. I was doing wrong. Like uh, now he's a vivo advisor. He's telling me like, okay, try this, try that, et cetera. <laughs> so he's helping me personally right. too. But he said, hey, like, especially if you're a sweaty person, like, like I'm a really sweaty person when I'm exercising, <laughs> you, have, you cannot just drink water to replace what you lost. Mm. Like, and I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's smart. Like, uh, it's, it started to change. It's coming to optimal more often, but still, still I'm in the low end. It's just an automatic thing. Like, if something has high salt, like maybe it's a mixed nuts or like fast food, I automatically avoid it, mm. which results in low sodium. Yeah. Well, no, that's very interesting because I did do a heavy workout, a big workout yesterday. And uh, perhaps that had an impact on it. So I'll test that again as well. Uh, Mirai, it's, it's really good to talk to you. I've enjoyed this so much and we, we need to stay in touch and do this again. Um, just tell us where people can find out more about you and about Vivu as well. Of course, um, you can visit vivu.io. Uh, it's vivoo.io or Vivu app. Our, is our handle in social uh, like Instagram, Twitter? Just reach us out if you want to get a sample or visit our website and use Tony's discount code. Yes. Tony, I'm sure. I've got it. It's, it's Zest30, which is 30% off, which is very generous. Oh, of course, for your audience. And if you have any questions, you can always reach us out from Vivo accounts. Just say, hey, I have a question for Mirai, and they will direct it to me. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Mira, it's really good to talk to you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. And when you fly back to San Francisco, remember, you're not allowed any of the food. <laughs> bad. You, you could try charcoal tablets, which I've taken on flights as well, but then you feel even more dehydrated when you get off the other end. That's the problem. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. But my, my challenge is to, like, when you're flying, especially business class like not first class but business class the food looks so good but yeah. it always messes you i'll yeah. try to uh pass this time i'm flying in a week so i'll try i'll try Great. i'll let you know <laughs> please please do lovely to talk to you keep up the good work with vivo and we'll speak again soon That is it for today's podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you, Mirai, for coming on as well. Uh, I'm very, very interested and fascinated to see how my stats pan out over the next few weeks. And I've got a feeling I might get quite obsessed with testing myself as well. So Vivu tracks 11 key wellness parameters. If you want to try it out, remember you can use the code ZEST30 at Vivu, V-I-V-O-O dot I oh zest 30 gets you 30 percent off with our special zestology code and then look listen out for future podcasts as i reveal some of my uh tracking stats and i have to say i am looking forward to doing the tracking after as we've been talking about in the podcast a long flight or when i'm feeling a bit suboptimal it'd be interesting to see what happens then or after six coffees <laughs> uh, it's uh, zest 30 at vivu Dot I -O. Big thank you to Magnesium Breakthrough as well for ensuring that my magnesium levels are spot on. I'm so pleased and grateful for that because, you know, I do take a lot of magnesium supplementation. It does help me in lots of different areas and it'd be a bit gutting if I then tested it and it came up low, but it looked perfect. So thank you to Magnesium Breakthrough and that is magbreakthrough.com slash zestology if you want to go and uh, check out what's going on there. 
and get that 10% discount with the code ZEST10. That is it for this week's podcast. Next week, we will be waking the chi. What does that mean? I'll leave it as a tease, and I'll see you next week. Bye for now.